Hello and welcome to another webcast brought to you by Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. My name is Seth David and I'll be your host for about the next 10 minutes. www.nerdenterprises.com Visit our learning center. You can go in there and download full-length classes on this kind of stuff and a whole lot more. So visit us there, www.nerdenterprises.com and you can reach our learning center via email by sending your emails to classes at nerdenterprises.com and one of our nerds will get back to you to answer any questions you may have. We have a live QuickBooks support line. You can visit us at nerdenterprisesinc.wordpress.com and go to our live support page. You can download our form and you can submit it either via email or fax and somebody will call you back within an hour or two and we can log in with you live and help answer your QuickBook question, get out of your trouble spot, whatever the case might be. It's at three dollars per minute with a minimum of forty-five dollars. So uh, usually we can answer questions in about fifteen minutes or less. So that covers you for the forty-five dollars. Anyway, want to get right into it. I've uh, obviously consulted and trained with lots of companies and bookkeepers and business owners, and there are certain things we encounter quite frequently. And one of them is the situation where a deposit has been posted incorrectly or for that matter a customer payment was posted incorrectly and it has since been recorded in a deposit and now it needs to be corrected and what further complicates this is the transaction may have already been reconciled which means you cannot delete it you can physically you can QuickBooks will warn you and then it'll let you if you insist but you don't ever want to do that because that throws off your reconciled balance the next time you go to reconcile your bank statements your beginning balance will not match if you delete a reconciled transaction so anytime I encounter a bookkeeper who's deleted a reconciled transaction, I smack them. No, I'm just kidding. But it's a bad thing, and you don't want to do it. So I want to go over with you a couple of scenarios for how to correct just this sort of thing. And that's what we're going to set out to do. I'm going to uh, share my screen with you. Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. Share the computer screen. And here's my outline, which is going to be up on the blog when we're finished recording this. It's a few simple steps, and I want to talk about two scenarios where this will happen. The first scenario I want to talk about is where you simply find, let's say, you receive a payment from a customer and you posted it to the wrong customer. But now you've already recorded the deposit, and so you don't want to delete the deposit because, let's say, the deposit has other payments in it. And so that's going to create a mess, right? Especially if you have a lot of payments sitting in undeposited funds, you don't want to do that. So let's go in here and let's say that this is a duplicate or this is an error. Let's say we did receive a payment of $500 from David Hughes, but that the $1,200 actually came from another customer and we want to fix this. We've got a deposit here containing several customer deposits totaling $4,035 with one component that needs to be fixed equaling $1,200. So what I want to do is I want to create a placeholder. We can even call it uncategorized income and put it for the same amount, 1200 Once that's in place there, I can select the line with the erroneous information, the information I want to correct. And I can choose Edit, Delete Line. And notice my deposit total is now the same. It's a 4035 But now I've replaced that $1,200 with this. I can hit save and close. QuickBooks will try and sell me something. And let's go find $1,200 for David Hughes. I just hit a control F. There's the payment. And again, QuickBooks is trying to sell me. And so let's say this is incorrect. We're going to delete this payment. Actually, what we can do at this point is change it to the correct payment. So let's say I had it written up here in my sample that the uh, correct customer was actually Erica Pretel. So here's her $1,200 and here's her invoice. And so now I can check it off and say save and close. Now I'm not finished because now I have to go back and complete this deposit. I can replace the uncategorized income line by getting rid of it. I go to edit, delete line. And then I want to choose my Payments button here. <clears throat> the Payments button will bring up my undeposited funds. So I check that off. 
and I click OK. And now I've got my same deposit total, 4035 and I've got the correct customer payments recorded. <clears throat> Notice the deposit total never changed. But between saving the deposit, the total was exactly the same. And therefore, had this been a reconciled transaction, I would not have affected the reconciliation one iota. An iota is something very small. All right, enough already. Now, there's another situation, because the question comes up, well, how could it be missed? If it's reconciled, it has to be the same. But there is one situation I showed you where the amount was the same, it was just the wrong customer. But let's look at another situation where it's been reconciled, perhaps, and we want to change it without deleting the deposit. The other one that can happen is we receive a payment, and let's say, let's say I'm a bookkeeper, I've been hired to clean up the books, and I'm finding that the owner is not the best bookkeeper. He might have been a great at landscaping and garden supply, but bookkeeping was not Larry's forte. And what Larry did was Larry posted invoices, and he posted payments on invoices, and then he re recorded the uh, deposits when he got the bank statement a month later, not realizing that that payment was sitting in undeposited funds waiting to be recorded in a deposit in QuickBooks. So instead, he went in and he recorded a deposit to a line item here called income in the amount of the invoice payment. And this is incorrect. First of all, we did not give our customer credit for having paid it here. And secondly, it should be coming from undeposited funds, which is what happens when we use the payments feature in QuickBooks. When we receive the payment from a customer, we put it in undeposited funds, then we go to record the deposit, that screen pops up that looks just like this. Well, actually, it's not going to show it to me now. I have to record a payment. So let's see who the other payment was for. Find out quickly by searching for the amount. 1438.56. And here's the invoice. So let's receive the payment. Proper way. And let's just say it was a check. One, two, three, four. Save and close. Forgive my tweet deck program. And now we want to go into the deposit here. And I want to get rid of the same process. I want to go to edit, delete line, and then I click on my payments button and I check it off and I bring it in. What happens the other way if I had received the payment on the invoice, left it in undeposited funds, and I've seen this a lot. Don't think it doesn't happen. It happens all the time. I had a client call me up last year, actually, and he had done this for the entire year of 2009. He calls me at the end of the year. I sent my, my, my nerd, my bookkeeper, to him, and she reported back to me that you know he had done this all year long. He received all the payments on the invoices and then separately recorded the deposits. He didn't want to pay for us because it would have been very expensive to go through and correct all these deposits one at a time. I honestly don't know what he wound up doing, but he couldn't afford to pay us to fix it. That's how bad it was. And uh, anyway, so what happens, though, is he's du duplicated his income because he, you record the income once when you record the invoice. Now, if I separately record a deposit and post the payment to an income account, well, now I've recorded the income twice, once in the form of a deposit, another time in the form of an invoice. That's why it's really important when you're doing bookkeeping to understand the concepts behind what you're doing because it'll help you understand how not to make mistakes like this. Because what happens is you understand that when I post an invoice, I'm posting income. When I receive a payment, there's no income recognized anymore. I'm basically getting rid of my accounts receivable and I'm putting the money into my bank. I'm increasing cash. Th those are the two sides of that transaction when I get a payment. And QuickBooks uses this undeposited funds account as sort of a special account that l helps you to actually record these things so that you can group payments together. So you can have multiple payments in a single deposit. Otherwise, you'd have to record each payment separately, and you'd have all these payments in the check register that individually add up to a deposit total that comes through on the bank statement. And that can be difficult. That can make reconciliation really tough. So this is how you can audit the books, and you can correct the uh, incorrect payments and deposits without destroying the integrity of the bank reconciliations. And that's it, folks. 
My email is seth at nerdenterprises.com. We'd love to get your questions, comments, and feedback. And visit our QuickBooks blog, if that's not where you're uh, currently watching this from, at quickbooksnerd.com. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic week and look for more great webcasts from Nerd Enterprises Incorporated.